Hey everyone, welcome to the video. Today we're doing a review of the Ender 3 S1 Pro. Now the Ender series has been around for a very long time to the point of where I think it's become a bit of a joke in the 3D printing space and it was around before I even got into 3D printing myself. So I got this 3D printer last year from Creality and in the last four months it's been superseded by the K1 that I've got. So I want to go over what I think of the Ender 3 S1 Pro from the point of view of a beginner who's been doing it around about a year now and I've started to get to the point where I can kind of just start to give my feedback on printers and filaments and all that stuff. So we're going to start with this printer. And so far this thing has done me very well. One major thing is that I've never had to disassemble any of it so far, not had to do anything with the hot end, it's just been beautiful to use. Unlike the K1, so the K1 is a much more high-end printer, Wi-Fi, it's uh, it does all the self level in itself it's really good but i've had to take the hot end apart twice to fix clogs and issues with filament feeding whereas the ender i have had no problem with it is more of a pain in the ass to initially get set up and to figure out how to get it all up and running but once you're there it feels like it's a much easier system to work with the k1 it's good if you're already got some knowledge and you're jumping into it and then you can get a little bit better and although the K1 on paper, I think would be better for a newcomer, when you actually do get the experience of using it, it's a little bit more pernickety than the Ender. So yeah, the Ender has been excellent for me. I've definitely loved it. It's worked well. I haven't had too much issues. The only real problems I ever had with it was getting stuff to stick to the base plate sometimes and just getting a good adhesion, which I haven't had a problem with at all with the K1. That's been a massive upgrade. And that meant that I was quite limited on what I could do with the Ender. I couldn't usually go too high. There's some projects on the channel like doing the Destiny Thorn weapon, which had a massive piece on the end. It did have a lot of surface area to stick to the base, but the first one failed and I had to redo it. So it's definitely uh, not the best for like doing quite big 3D prints. And I would definitely not recommend it. If anyone's thinking of doing something quite large, this is probably not the printer to go with. And that also goes for stuff like fine details as well. If you need adhesion on, then it makes uh, those fine details a lot harder to work with. So definitely K1 has been better for that than the Ender. But the other thing is definitely the speed. This printer was my first one. So this was my first jump into printing at any speed. So it felt awesome to just watch it slowly build up as it printed. But compared to the K1 now, it's slow as hell. So. I would definitely say to me that's his big downside. Now that I've got a fast printer, that is the printer I mostly print with. So the speed has become probably, if I was to go out and just buy a new printer right now, I would be going for something high speed. And that's probably the biggest bit of advice I would give someone who is going into 3D printing for the first time and they're thinking, oh, should I get an ender like this? I would say, no, it's just too slow. I would go for something faster. You're gonna be spending a lot less time waiting for stuff. You can get more done and the speed really is becoming just the main reason that I go and now use the K1. Whereas this Ender is going to probably fall less and less used over time. So yeah, 100%, I think that's the biggest downside is the actual speed. The overall construction, the ease of use are brilliant. And let's actually jump in deeper into that. So the overall construction of the 3D printer itself feels very sturdy, very good. Uh, with the K1, of course, it's all encased. This thing's all open. I don't really need it encased. It's a nice thing to have, but this kind of a form factor works perfectly fine for me. I got no real problems with that. Of course, it's loud, but still any 3D printer, even with a case around it, is still loud. So this to me is a great form factor. Actually works really good. The big thing that I do miss using on this printer is the hot end because it is just so simple. Of course, you just put the filament in the top, it feeds through. You can even do, I sometimes do like a switch of filament where I just snip the top of the filament, put another one in, and that all just goes smooth as can be. So that's a major uh, thing that is one of my favorite parts. And the K1, it's a much more pain in the ass thing to kind of switch out the filament. This thing, super simple, very easy. I'm a big, big fan, and that is something I massively miss in the more modern printer. Now, when it comes to overall print quality, I can't really talk about that at this point because I don't really have enough experience with enough printers. And what I'll say for me as a beginner in our first year, I have loved it. It seems to come out with beautiful quality and any kind of imperfections I really put down to myself. Like I usually set this on 110% print speed and that gives me some banding, but that's purely down to my problems. <laughs> I'm, I'm too impatient and I'm putting the speed up. 
So yeah, I think this thing has been a dream. It's been awesome to use. I was not initially going to get into 3D printing, but when I got this 3D printer, it sparked off something which is just pure passion. And I'm absolutely loving it. And I don't think I'll be turning around and deciding to stop 3D printing now. I think this is part of my life going forward. It has become a hobby. And this channel, if it you know kicks off someday and we gain subscribers, could just be something where I can put this passion onto the YouTubes. So I am absolutely loving the Ender. And I'm definitely, you know, loving the faster printer. But I do look back at this and I still use it, of course, time to time. But I do look back at it and I think it is a very good starter printer. The problems I've had with it have been minimal. And the fact that I haven't needed to ever take out, you know, a part of the hot end or anything like that. Whereas on the much more modern and faster printer, I have had to do that a couple of times already. And I've only had that like four months. So, yeah, even though the Ender series might well be a bit of a joke at this point, I do think this has been an absolute dream to use and I'm not trying to be cozying up with Creality here. I think there's a lot of other printers in this exact price range that you can go out and buy, but I have enjoyed the fact that it's not been too fussy with problems. And I do expect there is, of course, many printers in this price range that you can go get that are basically the same as the Ender here. But I only have the two printers to go over, so we're doing a review of this one now that I've used it for a full year. So yeah, my experience has been very, very good. And I think that leads us now into the conclusion for this video. So yeah, Ender is, I think, a very good starter printer. And I'm glad that I started with this rather than going into a more high-end one, considering the problems I've had with a more high-end one. And I've also felt that this printer works good. It's a little bit slow now. I feel like it's definitely slow. That's my major criticism. But the quality, and if you are patient and you just want to like print overnight or something like that, if you've got, you know, chuck you, you know, this 3D printer in a garage or in a shed or in a room that you're just not going to hear it from, then it's pretty much perfect. And you can just have something printing for a long time and check on every so often. It is not a bad thing. And then the major benefits for me have been its hot end because I don't have to do any kind of maintenance for the most part. Of course, I'll have to switch out a nozzle or two eventually, but right now that's not been a problem. And there's not been any clogs, not any, any issues, which has been nice. And I haven't needed to disassemble that hot end or touch it since initially setting it up. So that's been awesome. And the only major cons I have about it is that it's getting slow. It's definitely an old series that obviously has been revamped a lot. It doesn't have any of the real bells and whistles, like just auto level in your you know, bed and stuff like that, which on the K1, I love. Um, the K1 also has way better adhesion for me. And this means that fine stuff printing on this and really big stuff are not the best, but anything in between has been good. So yeah, I would recommend this printer. It's been fun to actually use and to learn on, and it felt like a very good beginner printer, even of course it is a old series of printers at this point and maybe should be replaced with something with similar features when it comes to the hot end and being able to easily change the filament but adding in of course the auto leveling uh, a better adhesion board and overall ending up with a printer that would be better for beginners and of course higher speeds as well but this review is for the ender 3 s1 pro that i have and i would recommend it but I assume there probably is better stuff out there. I'd love to know in the comments below what you would recommend for other people to try out and maybe even myself someday. Thanks very much for watching. Catch you next time.